Hey folks, thanks for tuning in. I'm Piano Man Steve Lundgren, founder of PianomanApproach.com and LearningMusicIsFun.com and creator of the Piano Man Approach online piano course. Today we have another edition of our Free Lesson Friday series where every Friday here on the channel we drop hopefully what is some pretty useful and practical information on various topics or we do demonstrations of songs using the Piano Man Approach method. And today we're going to be discussing uh, something that's pretty foundational about chords that I think people miss, and it is that there are really only five kinds of chords. Seems like there's a lot more, but we're going to get into why there's actually only five kinds of chords that matter. So before we get started, let me just uh, ask very shamelessly if you uh, enjoy getting free content like this. <coughs> Beg your pardon. Allergy season here in Nebraska. If you enjoy getting uh, free content like this, I would sure appreciate it if you'd give this video a like. Subscribe to the channel and uh, leave comments and share it with people that you might like, that you think might like it. All that good stuff helps me kind of, uh, you know, beat the, U the YouTube algorithm and get seen and heard by more people. And of course, check out my links down in the video description. Um, you can go over to pianomanapproach.com and join my mailing list for notifications about free content every single week. And also there's some free goodies over there for you. So we'd love to have you come join our community if you feel so inclined. And of course you can also see I have a digital tip jar, but that is not required. Just certainly appreciated for those of you that want to help me keep the lights on. Okay. So what we are calling this particular video today is there are only five chords. Why is this important? Well, <clears throat> it's important for my method of playing the piano. It's a little different. See, at the Piano Man Approach, we don't read notes on the staff. <clears throat> there is nothing wrong with reading notes on the staff, and I'm not here to trash it, okay? But I will tell you a couple of important things about that. It is the main thing that most piano teachers will teach you to do, but I find a couple of I I find there's a couple of pretty serious problems with it. Number one is that it is the hardest thing to learn how to do. There's a really long learning curve at getting good at that for most people. Of course, some people take to it like a duck to water and they're just off to the races with it, but that is not what the average person's experience is with it. It takes a very long time to get good enough at it that you're playing anything of any satisfaction. Okay, so it tends to weed more people out of playing piano at all than it does help people learn to play piano. And I think that's really tragic, and it leaves people with the impression that the reason that they can't do this is they're not talented enough or whatever. But really, it's just a matter of you're not committed enough to make something really, really hard, at, you know, to get really good at something that's really hard. The second thing is all the good stuff – all the stuff that sounds cool that's notated out, you have to be a really accomplished sight reader or a really accomplished reader to play. <laughs> I mean, let's let's just get down to it. It's it's uh so it's like there's not really a lot of intermediate or beginner level stuff that's written down on a page that's at all fun to play. The next problem is most of us are wanting to make music because we were inspired by the music that we grew up with, right? And that means whether you consider yourself old or young watching this video, that means somebody who grew up on the music of the 20th and 21st centuries, right? Popular music. And starting around the 1920s, the music that was most popular and started to get distributed out there on this wonderful new uh, invention they put out called the Phono Record, right? Um, that music was growing, you know, in a growing way, not notated. It was, it was improvised in various different ways. And there was a lot more fluidity. There, there are certainly some things that were notated that got popular, but 
there was a certain amount of fluidity and and the way that it was that it was come up with was sitting down and noodling around with chords and it's just gotten more and more and more that way the farther we get in and so <laughs> learning to read notes on a page is not a very very is not a very good way to learn the music that you actually probably uh, f- made you fall in love with music for um, and that is a problem to me because once again not being able to work on the repertoire that matters to you is one of the reasons why people get out of piano lessons rather than stay in long enough to get good. So it's not an effective way to play popular music for the most part. There are, <clears throat> there are always some exceptions, but on the, on the big hole from the music of the last hundred years or so, this is, it's the worst possible way to express that music. And, and it turns out that there's a much simpler path that is not only more congruent with the music that you love, but that you can go a lot farther, a lot faster, a lot easier, and have a lot more fun. And it's much more akin to what acoustic guitar players do. Okay? So it is learning chords and playing from chord symbols. So chords, and then plugging them into a rhythm pattern and then using very simple improvisation techniques that are based on the chords that you're already playing, and boom, you've got yourself a pretty darn good facsimile of a song very quickly. <clears throat> and these are very transferable skills that you can use in songs from multiple eras, multiple genres, etc. So that's what we teach at the Piano Man Approach, and that's why what I'm going to show you here about chords is kind of important. Okay, so a lot of people get confused by chords and they think that there's like a gazillion different kinds of chords. There's not. There's really there's only five that actually matter. And they're the five essential triad chords. OK, what do we mean by triads? It means they're chords made up of three tri three notes. So let's start with the good old user friendly key of C here. If you were to play a C major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, okay? If you were to count that out, one, two, three, four, five, the one, the three, and the five make up the triad. Boom. You're there. That is a C major chord. So a major triad is one of our kinds of chords. A major triad. Kind of a happy sounding chord, right? Now, there's a second kind of triad that kind of sounds sad. And it's called a minor triad. And all you have to do is take a major chord and lower the third, the three, one half step, like so. So when that E becomes an E flat, we now have a C minor. That is a minor triad. Note the difference. Bright, happy, jovial, sad, dark, stoic, right? Can you hear it? One of the reasons I'm pointing this out is that when you can learn to identify the emotion, the, the basic emotion of a chord, this actually helps you when you understand that there's only five kinds of chords out there that actually matter, and then you can kind of start to figure out what they sound like emotionally. This will help you build the capacity to pick songs out by ear, okay? Because all songs are just a collection of chords, chord sequences. And so if you can kind of follow along and note, oh, this has got kind of a sad sound or a, or a creepy sound or a happy sound, then you know what kind of a triad to be looking for. So, and there's other things about ear training with this that we'll talk about as we go. But so happy, sad, that's the second triad is minor. There is a third triad where now we're going to flat not just the third we're going to flat the five so we're going to lower the five one half step okay 
That is called diminished. It is a diminished triad. And it's a little bit creepy, uh, but the word that I would use is alarming. Right? It makes you go, oh my God, what's, what's hiding in the dark corner over there, right? <laughs> so, and um, just a fun little note here. One of the things happening inside of a diminished triad is the interval between this, the one, and that flatted five, which they call a tritone. Sound a little bit like a siren on like an ambulance or a fire truck, right? Because it gets people's attention because it's like, oh my God, it's alarming. Okay. Now, so we have one where it's a major chord. We flat the third, we flat the three and the five. Now what we're going to do is we're going to leave the major chord and we're going to sharp the five like so. Okay, up one half step. This is called an augmented triad. To me, this is the creepy one. This one sounds like... Sounds like they're a UFO just landed in the backyard and there's aliens coming out to visit you. Now... Diminished chords and uh, augmented chords are far less common than major and minor chords in popular music. But boy, does it make a difference to be able to play a diminished chord in the right spot or an augmented chord because they're so unique sounding, right? I mean, if the song is asking for this, you want to be able to play that, right? Because it doesn't sound right to play anything else. So <clears throat> that's the cool thing. Now there's one last triad, and it's called the suspended triad. That's where we take our major triad. We leave everything intact, but we sharp the third. We, we move the three up one half step. So from here to here. Boom. They call it suspended, and can you hear it? It's like suspended animation. It's tension. It's tension. It's, it's dying to resolve. Usually a suspended chord eventually resolves back down to either a major or it resolves to a minor. It can be... But in either case, it's creating tension and then eventually a release. Now, why do I say there's only five kinds of chords? Well, people get confused because you see all of these numbers and different symbols after. It's like you see uh, 9 and 7 and 2 and 6 and 11 and 13 and sharped this and flatted this and all kinds of various stuff. Sometimes you see the word M-A-J, you know, that kind of thing, uh, major seven. And those things are all important, okay? They are important, but those are all things that you add to one of the five triads I just listed. And you can always make the song work without any of that other stuff, as long as you find the right triad chord. So in other words, when in doubt, if it's a C diminished or a C minor or a C augmented or a C suspended or a C major, and then it's got a seven or a 13 or a flatted this or a sharped that or any of that stuff, and you're not sure how to read that and how to play it, especially if you're kind of like, going through your first walk through of the song and you don't know how to do it on the fly, just play the triad C or C minor or C suspended or C diminished or C augmented. And you are good to go. That will, that will contain all of the 
harmonic information that you need to carry the song forward every single time okay so i'm not telling you never play the the more sophisticated notes the sevens and the nines and elevens and thirteens and things but You don't have to have those in there for the song to work. You don't have to have those in there for it to be compelling and to sound good. But you do need to play the right triad. Now, the thing that I love most about it is once you do this, it really, really opens up all kinds of music for you because you don't have to have an encyclopedic knowledge of every kind of every kind of subtopic chord that's out there. You can just get started. The second thing is, as you're listening to music, you can be listening for those emotional signals. And if you're playing along, you know when you're trying to pick out chords for something, you know that if you land on a chord and you're like, I'm pretty sure I can hear, you know, on that spot, it's like I'm playing an A and I can hear that it matches the bass, like, Whatever the root of this chord is, is an A, right? Well, you've only got five different things to try, you know. You've got five different things to try that are very likely going to, one of them is going to be the right chord. And so it's like, hmm, does that sound right? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. How about this? How about this? How about this? Or how about this? So it really, really shortens the learning curve on training your ear to be able to pick out different stuff. So it's a it's a great sort of simplification hack for people that need it who aren't ready to read. Um, and this is especially important if you happen to like jazz music, um, like crooner music and that kind of stuff going back anywhere from say big band all the way through to like bebop and that kind of stuff. And you're in the early stages of your, of your learning curve. When you look at a jazz chart, like literally every single chord is going to have at least a seven. Usually it's going to have like a sharp nine and a flatted this and a I mean, it, they just go nuts with that stuff. There's a grace note in every single chord. And you're not ready for it yet. But you can simplify it down to these triads, and that gives you a firm place to start. And, as I say, it helps you build your own ear, your own ability to pick songs out, to pick the chords out of a song by ear, because you know what you're looking for going to probably be one of these triads the only other thing that you might run into and this is really a subject for a different video is that if you are on that a and none of the triads with a in the bass work so it's not major not minor not suspended not diminished and not augmented right but you can tell that you're right it's got an a bass well Chances are that what you're dealing with is a chord where specifically they decided to say, we're going to put this chord with this bass note <laughs> and they don't match up harmonically and they're tra- they're creating a special kind of tension um, on purpose. And um, But the thing is, you can start experimenting with that too. It's a good indicator that that's probably what's going on, right? Because you just tried all of the triads and none of them worked. And if none of those five triads worked, then I can almost guarantee you, well, it's something with a funky bass. That's good information for someone who's trying to, to train their ear. So anyway, that's what I wanted to impart to you today. There's five basic kinds of chords. There, and when you really get good at those... I believe that the foundation of being good at popular music is to really master in all 12 keys those five kinds of chords. Once you can do that, now you're off to the races and you can have all kinds of fun getting good at adding in 7s and 9s and 11s and 13s and sharp 9s and sharp 11s and flatted 9s and flatted 5ths and 6s and all kinds of other stuff. But... You really need to know those triads. 
in order to, uh, to be an effective player. And that there won't be a song in the world that you can't do a credible version with if you know all five of those. So I'm going to leave it there for now. Hopefully that was interesting food for thought and uh, gives you something to aim your studies at just a little bit is to get really good at playing those triads in all 12 of the keys because it will unlock every song you've ever loved. Every single one of them. Okay, guys, I'll let it be for right now, but please remember my personal mantra as you go out and continue to study. If you're not having fun when you're making music, you're doing it wrong. And I'll see you on the next free lesson Friday. All right, Piano Man Steve signing out for now. Bye-bye.